Hey YouTube, in this tutorial you're gonna learn about PWM output and input capture capabilities of STM32 timer and their application in measuring distance with SR04. This is how SR04 works, VCC is 5 volt, GND to blue pill ground, there is also trick and echo pins which are ground in idle state. For measuring distance, MCU should send a 10 microsecond pulse to SR04, then measuring pulse duration on echo pin. That is time taken by ultrasounds to leave sensor and come back. We should multiply the time we measure by 340 and divide it by 2. 340 is sound speed in meter per second. Another important thing is sampling period or measuring cycle. It means the time between two trick pulses that MCU is going to send. In data sheet, it says it has to be over 60 milliseconds. I do 100 to be safe. So every 100 millisecond, MCU should generate a 10 microsecond pulse. This is a PWM and I'm gonna use timer 1 channel 3 to generate this pulse. So timer 1 channel 3 output is going to be connected to trick pin of SR04. To measure on time of echo pulse, I have to know the time between rising and falling edges of echo pin. So I'm gonna connect echo pin to timer 1 channel 1 input. Then in rising edge, CNT register value is saved in CCR1 and in falling edge, CNT register value is going to be saved in CCR2. So I can calculate the difference between CCR1 and CCR2 in CCR2 interrupt. And that's how distance is measured. Next step is calculating ARR and PSC registers value. You should know CNT counter increments by 1 with each rising edge of Sika CNT and it counts from 0 to ARR. And about PSC register, it is for configuring Sika CNT clock frequency. Sika CNT frequency is Sika PSC frequency divided by PSC register plus 1. In this example, Sika PSC is internal clock with 72 MHz frequency. Now I'm gonna teach you the process in which ARR and PSC are calculated. Pay attention, this is not just about this particular project, you have to go through this process every time you're configuring an STM32 timer. There are two parameters here, counter period which is green and CCOS CNT clock period which is red. You have to decide based on your project and what you're doing what value these two parameters should have. Second step is using these two formulas to calculate ARR and PSC registers and keep in mind ARR and PSC are 16 bits and the max value can be 65,535. In this example, counter period should be 100 milliseconds. I talk about Sika CNT period in the next slide. In the first formula, we have counter period equals 1 plus ARR times Sika CNT period. In the second formula, we have frequency of Sika CNT equals frequency of Sika PSC divided by 1 plus PSC. So 1 plus PSC equals frequency of Sika PSC divided by frequency of Sika CNT. And frequency of Sika PSC is 72 MHz. And 1 divided by frequency of Sika CNT is period of Sika CNT. So the second formula becomes like this. 1 plus PSC equals 72 MHz times period of Sika CNT. And the first formula is this, 100 milliseconds equals 1 plus ARR times period of Sika CNT. Now if we decide a value for period of Sika CNT, the red thing here, with these two formulas, we can calculate ARR and PSC registers value. For period of Sika CNT, I choose the smallest value possible to achieve a smallest resolution for measuring time. With the first formula, calculate if period of Sika CNT is 1 microsecond, what would be the value for ARR? If you do this calculation, you find out ARR would be greater than 65,575. So I choose the value of 2 microsecond for period of Sika CNT. So with the first formula, we have ARR equal 49,999, which is less than the max value possible. And with the second formula, I calculate PSC equals 143. 
So in this example, C and T counts from 0 to 49,999 and with each rising edge of C cos C and T, it increments by 1. It means there are 50,000 steps and each step takes 2 microseconds. So this is going to be our starting point. I have a project here named SR04 with basic requirements of doing a project with STM32F103C8. There is a function here, X clock in it is for configuring clock to 72 megahertz and then we have x system in it this is configuring priority grouping cystic timer enabling power and afio peripheral and configuration of pin pr13 and pr14 for swdio and swclk in main.c file after main function i write a function with the return type of void the name is sr04 and input argument is also void I write the declaration of this function before main. First thing is configuring GPIOs. We have PR8, which is timer 1, channel 1 input, and we have PR10, which is timer 1, channel 3 output. First, we have to enable GPIO A clock, RCC, arrow operator, APB2, ENR, bitwise or assignment, RCC, APB2, ENR, IOP, AEN. By setting IOP, AEN bit in APB2, ENR register, GPIO A clock is going to be enabled and we can use this peripheral and configure its registers. I want PR8 to be input float so mode 8 should be 00, 0 so we have input mode and CNF8 should be 10 so we have floating input. Mode 8 and CNF8 are in GPIO A CRH register. GPIO A arrow operator CRH register first bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask. I want to clear mode 8 and CNF8 bits. So here I write mode 8 and CNF8 bit masks and I use bitwise assignment with not of bit mask to clearing these four bits. In the next line I write GPIO A arrow operator CRH bitwise or assignment. Then I write bit mask for bit 0 of CNF8. CNF8 should be 10. So I have to set bit 0 of CNF8. PR10 should be in alternate function push pull mode. So mode 10 should be 1, 0, so we have output mode with max speed of 2 MHz. And CNF10 should be 1, 0, so we have alternate function output push pull mode. Here I write GPIO A, CRH, bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask, because we want to clear bits mode 10 and CNF10. Both mode 10 and CNF10 should be 1, 0. So in the next line, I use bitwise or assignment for setting bits and I want to set bit 1 of mode 10 and bit 1 of CNF10. Our GPIO configuration is complete. Next step is configuring timer 1 and first we have to enable its clock RCC APB2 ENR bitwise or assignment RCC APB2 ENR timer 1 control space timer 1 EN. By setting bit TIM 1 EN, timer 1 clock is going to be enabled. Because timer 1 EN bit is in APB2 ENR register as IOP AEN bit, which is also in APB2 ENR register, I can set bit timer 1 EN in this line. I use bitwise OR here and place bit definition and add a parenthesis. Then I delete this line. So in this line, timer 1 and GPIO A peripheral clocks are enabled. Next step is configuring counter direction in CMS and direction bits. I want an up counting counter so CMS and direction bits should be cleared. Timer 1 arrow operator CR1 register I use bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask and the bits that I want to clear is timer CR1 CMS or timer CR1 direction. I cleared these three bits so now we have an up counting counter. Next step is ARR and PSC and I talked about how to calculate their number before. Timer 1, arrow operator, ARR, assignment operator. It's better to cast it you in 16T. The value is 49,999. Timer 1, arrow operator, PSC, assignment operator, you in 16T. Value is 143. Next step is configuring CCR1 and CCR2 for capturing rising and falling edges of echo pin. Both these channels are connected 
to TI1 which is channel 1 input so channel 1 and channel 2 are connected to channel 1 input in timer 1 this is PR8 pin that is connected to echo pin of SR04 for CCR1 to be connected to TI1 which is channel 1 input CC1S bits should be 0 1 in CCMR1 register Timer 1 arrow operator CCMR1 register I use bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask Timer CCMR1 CC1 control space CC1S With this line I cleared both CC1S bits And CC1S should be 0 1 So timer 1 CCMR1 bitwise or assignment for setting bit zero of cc1s timer ccmr1 cc1s underline i want to set bit zero for channel two ccr2 should be connected to ti1 which is input for channel one so cc2s should be one zero in ccmr1 register because cc2s is also in ccmr1 register as cc1s bits I'm gonna use these two lines for configuring CC2S. First, I'm gonna clear both bits of CC2S. So I add a definition here: timer CCMR1 CC2S. Now both CC2S bits are cleared. CC2S is two bits. CC2S should be one zero. So bit one of CC2S should be set. Timer CCMR1 CC2S bit one. In this line, I cleared CC1S and CC2S bits, which are 4 bits. And in this line, I set to 1 bit 0 of CC1S and bit 1 of CC2S. Next step is configuring. We want capture to be done on rising edge or on falling edge. Then we have to and we have to specify it for CCR1 and CCR2. For CCR1, we want capture to be done on rising edge. So CC1 P bit in CCER register should be zero. So we have non-inverted configuration. It means capture is done on rising edge of IC1, which is what we want for CCR1. Timer one arrow operator CCER bitwise an assignment for clearing timer CCER CC1P for channel 2 we want capture to be done on falling edges as you can see CCR2 we want capture on falling edges so in CCER register bit CC2P should be 1 timer 1 arrow operator CCER register for setting bitwise or assignment with timer CC CCER CC2P Next step is configuring channel 3 in output mode. Channel 3 is for generating trigger pulse. For channel 3 to be in output mode, bits CC3S in CCMR2 register should be 00. zero. So channel 3 is configured in, as output. Timer 1 arrow operator CCMR2 bitwise and assignment. Timer 1 arrow operator CCMR2 bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask timer ccmr2 cc3 control space i choose cc3s in this line two bits of cc3s are cleared so channel 3 is in output mode because channel 3 because channel 3 is going to be configured in pwm mode it is mandatory that we enable preload for channel 3 to enable preload i write timer 1 arrow operator ccmr2 bitwise or assignment timer ccmr2 if i set bit oc3 pe preload for channel 3 is enabled pay attention when you want to enable preload for a channel it can't be in output mode so before enabling preload i want to configure channel 3 so it is not in output mode for channel 3 to not be in output mode i write bitwise or assignment with bit mask so all cc3s bits are one and channel 3 is not in output mode then i enabled preload then channel 3 is in output mode bit oc3pe is here in ccmr2 register Next step is configuring channel 3 in PWM mode 1. To achieve this, bits OC3M in CCMR2 register should be 110. 
تایمر 1 ارو اپراتور سی سی ام آر 2 بیت وایز اند اساینمنت وید نات اف بیت ماسک تایمر سی سی ام آر 2 او سی 3 ام این دیس لاین اول 3 بیتس اف او سی 3 ام ار کلیر تایمر 1 سی سی ام آر 2 بیت وایز اور اساینمنت تایمر سی سی ام آر 2 او سی 3 ام آی وانت تو سیت بیت 1 اند بیت 2 سو هیر آی رایت بیت ماسک فور بیت 1 اند بیت 2 اف او سی 3 ام اند آی پوت دم این پرانتزیس Now OC3M is 110. So why did I choose PWM mode 1? Because I want a 10 microsecond pulse in a start of every 100 milliseconds. And this is PWM mode 1. Because when counter is less than CCR, output is going to be high. As you can see here, output is high in the start of every 100 milliseconds. And when counter is greater or equal to CCR, output is low. But what should be the value for CCR3? So we have a 10 microsecond pulse. You know every step is 2 microsecond and we want at least 10 microsecond pulse. If CCR3 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10 microsecond. But to be safe, I choose the value of 6 for CCR3. So 6 times 2 is 12 microsecond. And we have a 12 microsecond pulse in a start of every 100 milliseconds. So CCR3 should be 6. I write it here after PSC. Timer 1, arrow operator, CCR3, assignment, cast it, U in 16T, the value is 6. Next step is configuring polarity for channel 3 that is in output mode. I want it to be active high and I don't want to invert it. So bit CC3P should be 0 in CCER register. Here I write timer 1 CCER bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask timer CCER CC3P control space I choose CC3P bit and I cleared it here so output is not inverted next step is enabling channel 1, 2 and 3 1 and 2 are in input mode and channel 3 is in output mode for enabling them we just have to set bit CC1E, CC2E and CC3E timer 1, arrow operator, CCER register, bitwise or assignment Timer CCER, CC1E, CC2E, and CC3E. Here I have the mask for CC1E, CC2E, and CC3E, and I set all these three bits in CCER registers so three channels are enabled. Because I'm using timer 1 and timer 1 and timer 8 are advanced timers, when we have an output channel, we have to set bit MOE, which is main output enabled, for us to be able to use output channels. So MOE bit should be set in BDTR register. Timer 1 arrow operator BDTR register bitwise or assignment timer BDTR register MOE main output enabled. Next step is enabling capture compare to interrupt. So we do the calculation for distance measurement in CCR2 callback function. To enable CCR2 interrupt, bit CC2IE should be set in DIER register. So CC2 interrupt is enabled. Timer 1 arrow operator DIER bitwise or assignment timer DIER CC2IE. Remember before enabling each interrupt you have to clear its flag and timer flag are in a status register timer 1 a status register here I use assignment operator with not of bit mask timer SR capture compare to control space capture compare to interrupt flag I want to clear this flag so I do assignment with not of bit mask. So why so why this line is like this assignment with not? You should see how SR register works. Go read the reference manual about the status register in timer peripheral. And before clearing flag, it's good practice to generate an update event. Timer one arrow operator. And before clearing flag, it's good practice to generate an update event. Timer one arrow operator EGR assignment timer EGR UG. This is how you generate an update in timer peripherals. Next step is enabling capture compare to interrupt in NVIC peripheral. So I define a variable here uint32t. I name it PG as priority grouping. 
assignment and here i write this function nvik get priority grouping i read priority grouping with this function and i write it to pg variable then i use nvik set priority for specifying priority for capture compare interrupt of timer 1 first input of this function is interrupt number all timer 1 channels have one interrupt it's timer 1 capture compare irq number the second input is the priority that we want for this interrupt and i specify it with this function nvik encode priority this function has three input the first input is pg variable Second input is what we want for preemption priority. I set it to three, and the third input is sub priority. I set it to zero because we don't have any bits for sub priorities. And last function here is nvik enable IRQ for enabling an interrupt in nvik peripheral. This function has one input and its interrupt number. Timer one capture compare IRQ number. Then semicolon. And the last thing is enabling timer one itself for that i write timer one arrow operator cr1 register bitwise or assignment timer cr1 cen for enabling a timer you have to set bit cen or counter enable in cr1 register next step is writing callback function next step is writing callback function for ccr2 before sr04 function i write another function here with return type of void i name it sr04 callback input argument is also void next step is defining a variable of type float i name it this short for distance but this is not the right thing to do you shouldn't have a float variable especially in stm32 f1 series but in this video it doesn't matter my goal was to teach you how to configure timer 1 for sr04 then in sr04 callback i'm gonna calculate distance and save it in this variable so how we're going to calculate distance with unit of centimeters if we write ccr2 minus ccr1 this is the number of steps that happened between rising and falling edges and you know each step is two microseconds so i multiply ccr2 minus ccr1 by two microseconds now this is pulse duration with unit of second you multiply that by 340 and divide it by two 340 is a speed of sound and we divide it by 2 because it has to go and come back and at the end you multiply it by 100 to have distance in centimeter at the end formula becomes this ccr2 minus ccr1 times 34 divided by a thousand so here first i'm gonna cast it then i write timer one arrow operator ccr2 minus timer one arrow operator ccr1 i multiply that by 0 3 4 and i put a f after that it means this number is float i wrote the callback function but how does mcu knows this is a callback function we have to specify that to do that here i write x callback timer one this is a structure and i want to access its members i want to specify callback function for capture compare two after that you put assignment operator and write the name of this function name of a function is address of that function i store address of this function in this function pointer variable which is a member of this structure then you put assignment compile the code in main function before while one call sr04 function compile the code go to debug session switch in live expression you can see this variable run the code this is our project this is sr04 you can see it here this is blue pill with stm32 f103 c8 if i put this breadboard in front of our sensor now this is 2.6 if i move it as you can see this is now 3.8 if i move it further if i move it it's now 4.9 it's 6 8 11 10 and this is sr04 with stm32 without delay 